Hey everyone, welcome back to The Privacy Guy. Um, today's video is about the most important privacy tips that you can use to protect your privacy while you're using your phone. Um, you know, a lot of privacy tips apply to um, computer usage or um, kind of more stuff focused towards professional use or like how to protect yourself um, if you're working on a computer. Um, but you know, as people use phones for more and more things, they're opening themselves up to more and more vulnerabilities, potential data leaks, potential uh, privacy threats. And so I just wanna share a few tips for how to protect yourself. Whether you're using an iPhone or an Android, I think these are good go-tos to uh, kind of protect the basics when it comes to your privacy. So um, I'm sharing seven tips today. The first one is use a password manager. Number two is use a VPN on public Wi-Fi. Number three is be mindful of the permissions you give to the apps you have installed. Number four is research apps or the company that you're uh, interacting with before you share data or give those permissions. Number five is limit your exposure to social media and certain trackers that might exist on those platforms. Uh, number six is keep your apps up to date. And then number seven is only download apps from the Google Play or App Store. Um, so uh, the first one, use a password manager. I've mentioned this a lot before, but the idea here is that if you use a password manager to store all of your passwords, um, your passwords will be safe and protected by a password and um, with end-to-end -end encryption so that if someone gets access to your device, you're not gonna be sharing uh, all of your passwords. So, um, you know, don't just store your passwords in your notes app or somewhere that someone could easily find them by, you know, searching for passwords or whatever. So uh, definitely keep those in a password manager. Um, iPhones have this built in with the keychain. I uh, definitely recommend using that. It's super easy to use. And since it's, you know, comes on the phone, it's di directly integrated into the functionality of the apps and the tools you use on your iPhone. Um, <clears throat> number two, use a VPN on public Wi-Fi. Um, when you connect to a public Wi-Fi network, it's kind of hard to know what the actual functionality of that network is um, behind the scenes. So uh, there's a number of different attacks that uh, people could or hackers could like, kind of use to compromise your data to see what you're doing on the network. Um, man in the middle attacks are something to be aware of. So if you're connected to a non-encrypted network, anybody on that network could potentially, uh, you know, get in between you and the network so that all of your browsing behavior and information is uh, sent through them and they can view all of your activity on the uh, public network. So that's something to think about if you're traveling and if you're working in coffee shops or at an airport, um, a VPN will help uh, protect your browsing by sending it through an encrypted channel rather than just uh, in plain text on uh, the public Wi-Fi network. So um, I've made some videos about VPNs before, virtual private networks. Um, I think NordVPN is a good one. Uh, I used to recommend ExpressVPN, but recent uh, kind of news about having spies or whoever employed at the company has kind of uh, soured ExpressVPN's reputation. So I'm gonna go ahead and recommend NordVPN here. It's easy to use, easy to install, whether you're using a computer, a tablet, iPhone, Android, um, it's easy to use. Next up, be mindful of the app permissions that you grant to the different apps you have installed on your phone. Um, one thing that most apps do is they'll request this data when you first install it. It'll be a simple prompt of whether you want to allow or disallow a certain uh, tracking measure, whether that's sharing your location information or sharing your email address or um, other information with the app. Uh, many of these aren't necessary for the functionality of the app. They don't actually add to the experience. They're just uh, more ways for the app to collect information to advertise to you. So that's something to think about if you have a lot of apps installed on your phone, maybe apps that you haven't used in a while, if you just go through the permissions that you've granted and kind of clean those up and remove any unnecessary permissions, um, you can prevent you know some 
unwanted data leaks or hacks down the road if a given app has a problem. Um, next up, and this is kind of related, is research the apps or um, companies you interact with. Um, <clears throat> just because you search for something in the app store and an app shows up first, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's reputable or has a good uh, stance on privacy and data protection. So a uh, simple search on the internet can uh, kind of give you some more information about the developer of the app and kind of the functionality behind it. Um, another thing to do is just check the reviews and see if there are a lot of people that are disappointed with the, um, you know, the way the app handles user data. Uh, next up is limit social media exposure. I think the biggest point here is just that social media apps, their business is based on collecting more information. Um, so if you limit your exposure to those apps and those apps tracking scripts on the different websites you visit or different apps you use, um, you're gonna be in a better place because you're not gonna have your data spread out all across the internet um, to companies like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or Google or any of those companies. Um, but just by limiting your use of social media apps, you're just going to share less information and you're gonna give less power to those companies to influence your uh, behavior with um, you know, targeted ads. So that's another thing to think about. Uh, next is keep your software and apps updated and uh, to the latest version. Um, the idea here is that companies will update their apps if there's a security vulnerability or a hack or anything that um, they can fix. Um, they push those changes out in app updates. So if you're leaving your apps out of date for months or years at a time, uh, you're potentially leaving your information uh, vulnerable to certain vulnerabilities that may have uh, come up in the course of those apps life cycle. So um, just keep your apps updated. It's simple, it's quick. Um, just keep that in mind so you're not uh, putting yourself at risk. And then finally, number seven is only download apps from the Google Play or App Store. Um, and this one should be obvious. Um, if something has gone through the process to submit its app to the uh, Google Play Store or the iOS App Store, um, it's you know going to be more reputable than something that you just find on the internet and download through a random link. Um, <clears throat> so just make sure that the app that you're downloading is actually what it appears to be. Um, do some research and make sure that the app is privacy friendly. Um, and then uh, finally, just don't break your don't jailbreak your phone. Um, I know this was popular probably. 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Um, but when you do that, you're kind of breaking any privacy or security measures that the phone manuf manufacturer may have in place on your device. And um, those can definitely make a difference in keeping you private while you're using your, um, using your phone. So uh, use a password manager, use a VPN, be mindful of the app permissions you grant research the apps and companies that you use, um, limit your social media exposure, keep software and apps up to date, and then only download apps from the Google Play or App Store. Uh, those are my tips for using your phone privately. I know there's quite a few more that I could have gone into, but I think this is a good starting place and will set you up to uh, you know, not put yourself at risk and to protect your privacy as much as possible. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.